In this episode, we show you a whale and dolphin superhighway. Head skyward for a cetacean survey. And get surrounded by a super pod of dolphins. As we've seen already, it's clear that from below, Timor Leste is bafflingly biodiverse. However, its underwater treasures extend far beyond the coral rich coastline. Right on Dilly's doorstep is a narrow channel plunging to depths of over 3,000 meters. This is the Ombai Wetar Strait. Fed by the Indonesian through flow, it is thought that about 30% of all the water emptying from the Pacific to the Indian Ocean passes through this corridor of life. And with this mass movement of oceanic water, come some of its more massive inhabitants. Cetaceans, the collective name for whales and dolphins, are a common sight in Timorese waters. And with more than 20 different species of cetaceans, the Ombai Wetar Strait is a certified whale and dolphin superhighway. To get an idea of just how many whales and dolphins there really are in this small stretch of ocean, I went to meet whale whisperer Karen Edivan, who's got an interesting method of counting cetaceans. So Karen, what's the purpose of today's survey then? Basically to get information um, about the numbers of uh, whales and dolphins, how many there are, how many different species, what time they're coming, what time they're leaving. All this information is really important, not just for conservation, but also for tourism development. And how important globally is this area for cetaceans? Well, we think it's globally significant. Back in 2007, we did some very detailed aerial surveys and we spotted 2,000 animals just in one day. Wow. You know, and that's extraordinary. And if we look at the species diversity, we're looking at probably 24, maybe 25 species of cetaceans in Timor. You know, that puts it right at the very top of some of the most uh, significant, you know, global cetacean hotspots in the world. Any particular species you're hoping to see today? Well, I'm sure we're going to see lots of dolphins because we always see lots of dolphins. And if we're lucky, we'll see these big super pods of, you know, maybe two or three or four hundred animals, sometimes three or four different species together. I'm not going to lie, Karen, I'm very excited <laughs> about getting up in the air. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do oh, it. Okay. <laughs> Great. That's good. For usual scientific study, Karen's survey involves following a set flight path before counting and identifying whale and dolphin numbers from out of the plane window. We have a pod of dolphins and maybe some whales. But to get a clearer shot, we were allowed to open the door. With some valuable data recorded and the weather closing in, we headed back. Aaron, thank you so much. That was incredible. I have never seen so many animals in an afternoon, or in a full day, actually. How, how does it feel for you seeing that? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look it. at us. We're both buzzing. <laughs> we can't stop grinning. No, that's incredible. Yeah. And why is it that we're seeing so many different species here in such abundance? Why are we seeing so wow, many animals? Because here? it's the Ombai Wetar Strait, and because it's 
a superhighway. It's an oceanic superhighway, particularly for cetaceans. And when you think superhighway, it's the Indonesian through flow, that big current system that connects the Pacific Ocean to the Indian Ocean. You know, it's the largest amount of water travel, uh, movement on the planet. That's five million cubic meters of water per second flowing through a gap which is only 25 kilometers wide between Dili and Arturo. It's a huge bottleneck. And not only is it moving water, but it's moving things that live in the water as well. So it's not just um, cetaceans, but also pelagic fish and shark and turtles all coming through the Ombai Strait as well. As I said, one third of the water that comes from the Pacific Ocean into the Indian Ocean flows past Dili. While seeing cetaceans from the air was amazing, nothing quite beats seeing an animal up close. So there was only one thing for it, get out on the big blue myself. Joining boat skipper Kevin Austin and his local crew of cetacean spotters, we set forth directly into the traffic on the Whale and Dolphin Superhighway. And sure enough, we weren't disappointed. So we're really lucky now. Kevin thinks that we have spotted a pot of Riso's dolphins out here. And they've got these very distinctive white heads. And there you can probably hear we've got the drone going up in the air, trying to get some aerial shots of them. I'm just gagging to get in the water because I doubt there's that many people on the planet with pictures of Riso's dolphins. With their beautiful markings and elusive nature, these dolphins would be an ideal underwater photography subject. But as always, the real challenge is getting close enough to fire off a photo. The characteristic whiteheads of Risso's dolphins are the result of scarring from battles between males. They have evolved to remain unpigmented and thus appear white so that potential sparring partners can easily size each other up and see who has the most fights under their belt. Despite clearly being in a few bouts, they were still very afraid of me. Gone. <laughs> this is so difficult. <laughs> we're, we are literally trying everything. But we have to remember that these are a very shy species. Kevin has only seen them twice in three years. We are trying everything. And I have had one more idea for a last throw of the dice. Are you ready, Will? some flotation devices to try and manoeuvre us into a position so we can get closer to these Rizzo's dolphins. Uh, it's quite intense. It's going to go very slowly, but it's still, uh, still pretty difficult work here. Oh, oh, have we seen them? We've seen them. Uh, still no luck. Oh no, are the dolphins coming? They're coming our way. Dolphins are coming our way. We've not had much luck so far. It's really, really difficult. They're so shy. But they're coming this way again. And yet again, they are probably going to get within about 10 metres and then dive. And then we're going to try again. Oh, it's tough, tough old work, this wildlife filmmaking business. Huh? Unfortunately, on this occasion, my plan didn't work. And soon the dolphins left, unimpressed by our efforts. Thankfully, it wasn't hard to find some more. So 
Yeah, we've just seen a super pod of dolphins who are feasting on a bait ball over here. We've got birds on it as well. The tuna, oh, they're, they're coming right out of the water. A super pod is when many different pods or family units come together to form a collective group. They can be made up of a number of different species and hundreds of individuals. Scientists aren't quite sure exactly why super pods like this form. It could be to protect themselves from potential predators or maybe work together to hunt fish. But since cetaceans are such social creatures, it could also just be for fun. From the sky to the sea, the Ombai Wetar Strait is an incredible place. With one of the highest concentrations and species diversity of cetaceans worldwide, it is most certainly a whale and dolphin super highway. And we haven't even gotten to the big boys just yet.